made into game three in the split series. What's, whether it's the mindset or there's a specific approach for you guys, how are you guys kind of just feeling heading into these two games here in San Diego? I think everyone's pretty relaxed. Um, you know, I think I'm just going to echo what I've said the past few days is that we're going to take things one day at a time. Um, you know, there's no pressure in our clubhouse right now. Everyone's pretty free, pretty loose. It just feels like another game. Next question. Okay, far right, Dave. Ed and Chris was just in here and he said he believes Padres are playing their best baseball of the season. In that first game when you came in for the sixth inning, could you sense that as well? They're at bats. Are they the best that you've experienced so far this year, especially after just seeing them in September? Uh, yeah, you could say that, but I think we see you know everyone's best every time you play the Dodgers. I think there's always uh, it's an elevated game against you know the Los Angeles Dodgers. So I think us seeing the Padres so much this year, um, you know we always want to win these big games. So I think uh, it being the playoffs, obviously these games mean just a little bit more. But I think you see that from everybody across the board. I think you know uh, the effort level is just increased you know as a whole across the board. Okay, then Jack in the middle. And you just get kind of. You know, you guys don't have a lot of like defined roles with the way the bullpen's set up right now. Like going into every game, like how much of an idea do you kind of have about who you might be facing or when you might be pitching, and, and kind of how do you just go through the, the process of preparing for that each night? Our staff does a great job of communicating uh, what might be expected of us you know, each and every night. So I think um, you know on a day-to-day -day basis, they they approach us with you know maybe a stretch of hitters or a line of innings that they're expecting out of us. Um, you know, they do a great job of letting us know early enough to where we can prepare in the bullpen and I mean, even if they don't even if for whatever reason uh, they haven't communicated that message each of us has a good feel for uh, you know what the starting pitcher is doing and you know when we start need to prepare and, and how we need to move around and get ready to go in and pitch not every bullpen might be able to kind of handle you know that sort of setup like why do you think you guys have been able to, to adjust to it and kind of succeed with the way it's kind of shaped up here you know I think we've, we've somewhat done it this way all season um, you know, unfortunately, we lost you know Blake early and Daniel Hudson shortly after that. Um, so you know, outside of the ninth inning early in the year, we didn't really have defined roles, and it was just you know again going out there and getting the guys out that we were called upon for. So I think um, you know the nature of what our bullpen has done this whole season, everyone's somewhat just bought into that idea of you know when the phone rings and your name is called, you go out there and you get your outs. Okay. Hey, Evan, given the circumstances after losing game two, how helpful is the game off, not only for the, or the day off yesterday, not only from the bullpen standpoint, but just overall team standpoint? Uh, yeah, you know, the travel was brutal, you could say, going down from Los Angeles. No, <laughs> brutal for us, too. Yeah. Uh, there was some traffic, but uh, besides that, um, you know, it's just a nice reset button. I think um, you know, the idea of the off day is to allow everyone to uh, you know, even the playing field a little bit for both sides. So. And that being said, we're all going to come out here hopefully fresh and hopefully uh, you know, refreshed and re-energized and uh, ready to win a ball game. Okay, we go down the middle, Fabio. Yeah, Evan, I remember kind of talks about the like, gameplay that you guys do as staff. How different is the sort of game plan dossiers that they sort of do for series different from like, different places you've been? Uh, you know, it's hard for me to really expand on that because you know, in my you know prior organizations, um, you know, Baltimore, we didn't really have as many defined roles. It was more so. Uh, who's available to pitch that night. You know, it's much different with a winning ball club that's got the idea of, of winning the World Series. So um, this is the first time I've really experienced anything like this, but just as a baseball fan and, and watching games, you know, growing up, you know, it felt like there was always that, that sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth inning guy. But I think, um, you know, the, the Dodgers have kind of uh, invented this new way of approach to a bullpen, you could say. And I think uh, you've seen it work for us, you know, most of the season, and um, it's just a more, I guess like a focused approach on getting certain hitters out and understanding, uh, you know, what what pitcher may have an advantage over those guys, you know, each and every night. How much do you get to get used to pitching from that approach? Just you having to slow down the moment and sort of anticipating that everything that sort of comes with, especially in this environment. Uh, yeah, my mindset has been, you know, something I've had to had to develop, you know, over the course of my entire pitching career, you know, all the way from high school through college. Um, you know, there have been moments where I would let situations or uh, you know, the score dictate you know, my emotions for that inning. And it was just a very unhealthy you know, process for me. So allowing myself to you know, hit zero every single time and, and go out there with just a, a baseline mentality every single inning, no matter what inning it is, has really helped with those leverage innings. Hey, 
your starting pitcher tonight, Tony Gonsolin, reminds me of a little of you in the sense that you know he's been around the game for a while, but this year in particular, they put the pieces together and they're having a career season. Uh, so on the opposite side, Blake Snell is a former Cy Young Award winner. Historically, he's been very good. When it comes to that matchup in the postseason, does recent success and having a great year roll over, or is like you know having historically multi-year success? How do you think that plays out? You know, I think both of them can go hand in hand. Um, you know, what Blake Snell has done across his career is very commendable, and he, I think the Padres would expect to get some of that here tonight. And, you know, same goes for the Dodgers with us with Tony. Um, he's had a career season, like you said, and we expect to get the best out of him as well.